Welcome to another edition of the Kumble Corner. I am Super Joshi, joined by Nakul Pandey and Karan Mehta, who is paying uh, tribute, homage to Merv Hughes, who saved Ian Botham this week. Um, if you like this episode, hit subscribe, <clears throat> if you haven't done already, or hit follow wherever you are viewing this slash listening to this. Um, and also, don't forget, we're on the socials. Just search Gumble Corner. That's both of those with Ks. Gumble with a K, obviously. Corner with a K. Hit like, hit share. Just tell everyone about this because it is, I think, probably the most awesome Indian cricket show that was that debuted, debuted, debuted in the last three months, I think. Uh, boys, shall we uh, get straight into it and talk about South Africa and real cricket? Proper cricket came back. For one game um, when India beat uh, South Africa in the first T20. And now in the second T20, I guess it was all restored uh, and India kind of uh, threw it away. What are your thoughts? Yeah. Nakul Pandey, you first. Yeah, yeah. Very, very, very different conditions in, in Berha uh, than, than to Durban. If you look, the um, Sanju Samson doing his classic thing of starting a series incredibly well. Uh, He's uh, he may not have staying power, but my god, he can hit the ground running. Uh, Isn't and then... his, his dad has been giving out this week. Uh, I heard saw something today that his dad's got involved, like saying, uh, Oh, yeah, I didn't, he... see... well, I didn't see that. Uh, yeah. the <laughs> new, the new Shumman's dad or the new Sunga's dad, excellent. Yeah, uh, that's what we need, yeah, that's what we need more, more meddling fathers, um, <laughs> more of which are none, perhaps. Uh, but yeah, uh, <laughs> No one really got going on on either side. The uh, uh, could see is the only batter who scored above strike rate of above uh, 130 on either side in the match. Uh, Hardwick after uh, after some pretty good form uh, recently, uh, eight up 45 balls for for, for 39, and then uh, despite Varun Chakravarti uh, coming back and doing and doing phenomenally well, uh, South Africa managed to managed to to rescue themselves with um, you know, Tristan Stubbs. An unusually quiet innings from him, forty-seven or forty-one, uh, and then uh, could see her giving it some, giving it some long handle uh, down the bottom. Uh, means it got was one all with uh, one all with the uh, with two to play. Uh, uh, Very lucky also... indeed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, could see her uh, took some wickets in the first game as well. So, uh, so he's he's going all right. Chuck uh, has been an excellent series for him. Eight wickets so far in the. Uh, in the series, uh, you know we, we we've seen uh, Indian spinners do well in South Africa uh, before, uh, and we'll see how we go in the uh, in the subsequent in the subsequent game. So the third one at Centurion tomorrow, and then uh, and then at uh, Wanderers on Friday. Uh, did did you catch on commentary um, Philander calling? Pommy, he, they were, he just said Umbangwa, and uh, Pommy was like, uh, yeah, okay, Philander. Did you, <laughs> did you catch any of that? <laughs> that probably was the highlight of the game, to be honest. This just confused banter in the commentary box. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I can't I can't remember if Vernon Philander is one of those uh, South African cricketers who had to go to a private school to uh, to make it well. That's a very private school thing, isn't it? Going, just going by surnames. Or German as well, they do that. Do they? Yeah, yeah they, they, it's, it's a it's, it's a thing. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> right, uh, Curran, what did you like out of the game? What didn't you like? And leading question: Did it remind you a bit of the? Uh, did the scoring and the, and the kind of slowness of it remind you a bit of uh, the old World Cup in the USA? The pictures over there. Um, yeah, to an extent, um, the batters definitely had to. What's it called? Manufacture runs there as opposed to like the balls coming on, which. Um, I guess has some similarities to New York, not necessarily Dallas. Um, but what, uh, I mean, in the second match, there wasn't a lot to like necessarily. Vulnerable Welsh sure. opening top order, I think we were like 13 for three or something like that. It's hard to bounce back from there. Um, and it was kind of funny because after the first T20, I started having like this sort of epiphany. And it might have just been a scary realization where I was like, is T20 India's best current format of cricket? Which 
could potentially because that, that Sanju innings is great, and I was like, all right, maybe this is where we just throw it. We just win the World Cup. Let's just keep the momentum going. Maybe uh, Red Ball Cricket has sort of fallen off the wayside for a second, and this match happened, and it was sort of old habits coming back into um, forefront. Nothing. No one really seemed to have settled in after that start. It's hard to um, sort of get your feet bearing as a middle order, and they kind of did the best that they could. Um, but yeah, overall, I'm just not engaged in this series, I think, uh, as I typically am in India series with the India A match going on, which is all, which has been riddled in controversy and in excitement. And then this series so far has kind of gone on ho-hum. But I like to see the young players playing well. I like seeing Sanju. I like seeing Varun. Um, it is kind of nice to see a change of faces. Um, but... I'm, I'm more concerned about Gautam's approach. I don't love everything I'm seeing yet. And talking of his approach, um, should we should we talk quickly? I mean, actually, see, before we say that, I just want to say I really enjoy these low-scoring games um, because it. And a lot of people were slagging off um, the T20s in in the US, <laughs> but I actually quite like it. It just felt more of a cagey affair, maybe because it reminded me a bit of a day five test match, probably, but I quite enjoyed those. Um, talking of... of uh, Godi's approach. Um, your friend Sanjay Mandrika, as Sanjay Manju has had a bit to say about him, um, and his press conference demeanor, should we say? A- any thoughts on that? Nickel smirking, gone, Nickel. I mean, I don't think we learned anything that we didn't already know, did we? <laughs> uh, I, I'm suddenly expecting Gautam Gambhir to be, uh, you know, super charismatic and friendly and open. Uh, it was really just that was never gonna gonna happen and i i think so sanjay mandraka for those who who haven't been following so he said just watch gumbir in the press conference maybe wise for the bcci to keep him away from such duties let him work behind the scenes he does not have the right demeanor nor the words when interacting with them rohit and agarkar much better guys to front up for the media Forgive me if I'm wrong, but isn't interacting with the media a fairly significant part of the job yeah. of a head coach? Yeah. Massively so. And I was going to say, also, uh, I was just thinking, <laughs> would he have said this if got these from Mumbai? And then we just, him, the people he's named, Rohit and Agarkar, both Marathis. So I think there may be just some of that thing that we've always, there's always been accused of in, in Indian cricket. But also, um, got has got to stay. He's got to talk to the media, right? Uh, it's, it's a significant part of his job. And uh, look, a lot of coaches are going to get very are going to be in this slightly defensive mode uh, after a, after a big series loss. Obviously, he's going to back his players in public. That's the that's the point. Uh, you're not going to get like it would have been really weird, and I'd have been far more critical if he'd have like started picking Rohit Sharma and Virat Kohli apart <laughs> in a press conference. Um, I <laughs> yeah. wouldn't necessarily be that surprised if that happened, but it's just not going to happen. So I don't really know what anybody was was expecting. People calling it like an epic clap back to Ricky Ponting. Uh, it's like Ricky Ponting said Virat Kohli's not in his best form. Everyone takes this as some kind of like uh bl- like starting a blood feud. Uh and then and then Gotham Gambier says he's a really tough guy. Uh I don't have any concerns about his form. He's scored runs in Australia before. Uh so a lot of it is just like the People before a series just trying to latch onto anything and create uh, some kind of uh, some kind of thing out of it, but it, 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 it's it's pretty clear that, that Gautam Gambhir is not someone who's particularly comfortable in that environment. He's not someone who thrives in that environment. He isn't someone who's ever going to like have the media on his side uh, through his through his personality and through his charisma. That's just not. Like, I don't know what anybody was expecting, uh, to, you know to be honest. There, there's a bit of a stereotype about certain Delhi boys being, you know, a little bit forthright, a little bit sweary. Um, and it's... That, 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 will be, that will be one thing, but it, kind of this... Uh, Gotham Gambir always has the slight air of, how dare you ask me a question? Uh, and a lot of coaches have, a lot of coaches get into that mode, but Gotham Gambir starts in that mode. <laughs> and we, we, we know we know this. Uh, nobody nobody thought that, uh, that it would be any different. Uh, and you know his his answer to uh, his answer about whether he's feeling the heat from social media in some ways 
if you if you take the words, what difference does it make? What difference does it make in life, my life or anybody's uh, life? Always going to be difficult. Always going to be highly prestigious. Uh, it sounds it sounds fine. It's just the fact that he says it in such a in such a prickly way. And again, the, I don't know if there's that much he can do about it because that's just him. Um, yeah, he he does. It, have it, that does, it, does it, it doesn't. It doesn't project a huge amount of confidence. He's never projected a huge amount of security and comfort in his own skin. He's always projected this kind of uh, "you're out to get me. I'm going to show you." Uh, uh, type, as did Justin Langer, uh, the former Australian coach, like quite similar characters in a lot of in, in a lot of ways. I mean, Gambier doesn't have that sort of spooky, slightly. Uh, slightly, I'm going to try and convert you to my uh, uh, to my multi level marketing scheme energy that that Justin Langer has, uh, but he has that same kind of uh, aggressive defensiveness. If that may, if that makes any sense, and mm-hmm. it's what made him a good, very good player for a time, like one of the one of the best test openers in the world for a few years uh, until it all completely fell apart. The the issue is, you know, it doesn't necessarily give you great vibes or, around the team, and you wonder what that translates to in the dressing room environment. Don't really know, but uh, it doesn't. I think the idea that you can, the idea that you can hide him away from the from the press and and doing press conferences is just is just nonsense, um, and. I really don't know what anybody was uh, was expecting to see from him. You're just going to get some kind of spiky, awkward press conferences. Um, and if if and when India win some games, which they will, it's going to be hailed as, you know, in the same way that Ganguly's aggressiveness and uh, and willingness to circle the wagons was, was seen as a great, um, you know, India standing up for themselves. It'll be seen in the same way uh, if if India win, and if India lose, then everyone will be picking holes in it. That's just how it goes. Um, yeah, angry uncle energy. But the, he did actually say again. He he say he reiterated how um, how much of an honour or privilege it is for him to coach India and all the rest of it. So he he kind of he has those lines down. And I, I I guess I I would. Oh yeah, for, I think for the country for the, for the country for the country for the country. He definitely he. I mean, he clearly believes that in both his <laughs> in both his professional and political and personal life. And I'm not even necessarily saying that as a as a criticism, although I do find some of the nationalism a little bit wearing, but like he's always the, the one thing that I, you know, I, I have my criticisms and and things of of Gautam Gumbir. The one thing I can say about him is that I don't think he's going to try and be anybody else. And and maybe then, Karen, you can't fault the passion. The passion you can't knock the yeah, passion no, if I... you can knock anything else. This is what I want from Gautam. I want him to be prickly. I want him to push back. I don't want the media. And overall, in general, sports media has. Um, well, I guess I'm talking more about American standards, but they do have a little bit of entitlement where they think they deserve the answers and that the players should pour their heart and soul out into everything. I don't necessarily think that's necessary. I don't want that from Gautam. Um, also, Ricky Ponting saying that thing about Virat that is a blood fuel. Let's uh, let's get that out of the way. I do take that personal. And I do want Gotham to specifically fight back, um, either physically or verbally. Um, but this is exactly what you'd want. And I know Sanjay, isn't he kind of a bit of a Looney Tune in yeah. terms of like the media landscape? Like, this is some magic all the time. Yeah, where everyone's always a little bit cautious about some of the random shit he spews out. Um, yeah. It's unrealistic. That's sort of like, there was a phrase, where, there was a phase again, which I guess we're going to go through again, where it's just like, man, if Trump just didn't speak or if Trump just didn't tweet, uh, Grant, I just, in a similar vein, Gautam doesn't have that luxury. He has to talk. He has to be the face of the team. Um, I think it would have been completely different sort of... I think the the precipice of who he is would never change, but I do think if the test series goes differently in, that, in those matches and you show a little bit more fight, I don't think he's going to be as, uh, as knuckle, I think, pretty aptly worded it, aggressively defensive, uh, which is a direct parallel to the way that he played cricket. Um and I like that chip on the shoulder, but I, there is always an issue where when you're the big dog, you can't always play with that chip on your shoulder because at some point you have to be the 
the hunting. It, it is pretty. It is pretty. I can understand why. And frankly, I feel it like India playing the victim card, given their current preeminence in in financial cricket. I can understand how that feels a bit like, guys, what are you doing? I can understand how that <laughs> feels a bit sickening, frankly, from from the outside. I, I to be honest, I don't think even think he really was doing that. That might come. Like that might that sort of. Um, uh, that sort of siege mentality, Jose Mourinho picking a fight just to just to pick a fight, uh, thing, um, slash sort of verging on the conspiratorial. Um, we haven't seen that yet from Gautam Gumbir. We have had hints of it in his previous sort of life in the media. Um, the the issue that I have with it, as as I've said before, is what does that transmit to the team when things are going wrong and when they need to change the dynamic, when they need to be more positive, when they need to uh, when they need to pick up pick up spirits, pe- each other's spirits, and I think be a lot of that's a very very that's a very very open question at the moment. I think it'll be pats on the back and say, come on, Ben Stokes, that's what will happen. Yeah. It isn't the thing like similar with Mourinho that his personality wears thin within like three years. If you're not winning, it's really hard for uh, the player. And also it's it's much better viewed from a distance. And I was mm. I was actually I'm glad you made that comparison, Nicole, because that's kind of what was coming to my mind. Mourinho in the way well the Mourinho had a bit more charm, was a bit more cheeky. I think, we talk, I think we've things. talked about this before. Um Maybe even last week, like there's no twinkle in the eye with Gotham Gumbir. There's no breaking the <laughs> there's no breaking the fourth wall. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. with with Gotham Gumbir. There isn't the kind of I don't know if you saw sidetrack Mourinho's thing recently during the 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 recent uh, Galatasaray game. Uh, yeah. uh, sorry, Fenerbahce. Sorry, uh, that would start a riot so, if I. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, they so they played a game recently which they won by the way uh and then he spent the entire uh press conference uh slagging off the referee and the and the var and there's a wonderful moment where the interviewer he's doing it through a translator because he hasn't let, yet learned turkish having been only been there for a few months uh and so the he's doing it with an interpreter and the the interviewer says something and then the interviewer says uh this interview was live, but while you were saying those things uh, about the VAR, they took it off being live. And Mourinho looks to camera; <laughs> he looks to camera like like it's an episode of The Office. And <laughs> there's just this wonderful. It's just that, and he knows exactly what he's doing, and it's wonderful to watch as long as you don't have to watch him every week. <laughs> and it, it's impossible to imagine Gotham Gambier doing it with that kind of knowing uh he never looks like he's enjoying himself he never <laughs> ever looks like he's enjoying himself ever uh he and, is like he reminds me of akshay Khanna. sorry bollywood reference carry on uh, and and so th- i think that the the comparison kind of kind of falls down and as i've been alluding to and as as, as karen alluded to pretty much everything is forgiven when you're winning like it you know Shastri's bubble 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 bubble. <laughs> uh that's hilarious because India won that series. Mm. It sounds yeah. in in a, in a slightly different way. Um John Lewis, the head coach of the England women's team, uh today I think has been you know, he, he was asked a question about England players taking like showing photos of themselves like having fun during the T twenty World Cup, which they obviously they crashed out of in, in the in the last group game. And and he was saying he was saying like, you know, they probably shouldn't have been doing that. No one cares if England or win if England win. That that's just not that is that is looking for an answer. Uh, that is looking for an excuse after the fact. Like Eng- England didn't lose that that game against the West Indies because some of their players were in their downtime having a bit of fun in as much as they were allowed to in Dubai. So same right. ex- same example with that. I mean, there's been some. There's a picture of Cummins um, with his missus enjoying cold play rather than playing against Pakistan, or something along those lines. I saw, uh, and again, exactly the same thing. And actually, funny enough, no one's talking about Pakistan 
winning in Australia, uh, which is quite rare in itself. It is, yeah. I mean, it was a, it's a, it's not a, it's by no means a full strength Australian team, uh, obviously because of the Test series coming up and a few injuries as well. But it is, it is pretty remarkable. Um, no, it's the yeah, same Harris, as- Harris, 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 Ralph bowled magnificently during that series. Hmm. Uh, Gillespie, who didn't ever want to be the one day coach, has now become the one day coach. And uh, actually, you know, probably there is someone who can create a quite a calm and uplifting environment if you just if he's ever allowed to. Like he's about as close as you can get in that environment to sort of a kind of calm, calm head. Um, and I don't think it's a coincidence that a lot of people thought wanted him to take the India India job, and maybe that is a a personality thing that might might work out. Might work out better. Um, so talking about, um, sorry, go on, we can say something. Yeah, I, I think the the thing that slightly disappointed me that disappointed me more with uh, with uh, with Gumbir is I appreciate that he probably can't say because the decision hasn't been made whether Rohit right, is going to miss the first test. But the more he the more he went on about that and about who might open the less clear and less confident everybody became. Um, it would have been... It's always easy to go back after the fact, but, like, you know, he says, it could be Abhimanyu, you, it could be KL Rahul, and then goes on a long thing about KL Rahul's versatility, which is all true, and then goes back to Abhimanyu, you, and it sort of it, decide, it, it makes it look as though he hasn't made up his mind, which is fine, but you can't tell people that. Mm. Like, you don't, you don't give that all away... Like in 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 public, like like that, there is a reason why. For all that it can that it irritates people, and you know myself as a journalist, it can be a bit irritating. Like there are some things you probably do need to keep a little a little closer to to the chest. Like you can, but like, uh, there's nothing particularly wrong with saying that Roy Chandra is is our first choice. It is up to him uh, what what happens uh, with the with the first few tests, and we'll make that decision when we come to it. So this is last week. Um, I, Instead, he has the selection meeting in public. Yeah, last week I asked um, KK this, who actually didn't come back, made himself unavailable for selection. I think he had enough uh, of, of me referring to Pakistani players Katapa, to be honest. But um, he, we, we, I, I asked him a question about who in about about the order and all the rest of it, and in the end, tongue in cheek, I said to him, "So the answer is your choice is KL, because that's what just seems to be the default thinking for." For, for, for like BCSCI selectors and just the Indian team, and it seems they got these kind of backed up that that joke really from me that that kind of little piss take from me, uh, which I mean, do you do you buy this line that Kale's made runs there before, therefore he should come again, good again, or do you think really he's getting too many chances? Uh... That tells me all I need to know. <laughs> I think yeah, probably I mean, both of you made that sound. You can come up with a justification for it. For sure you can come up with a justification for it. Whether it's the right call or not, I don't know. Like the the it's very hard to tell from the A game because neither of them were really out there for long enough. Like KL Rahul I mean, KL Rahul, you know, by all accounts in the first innings of that game looked didn't pretty he good. Travel, he, no, but didn't he travel with Jarrell though, right? Jarrell going he did. With jet, jet lag for- he, Yeah, he did. Um but I'm saying like he I meant more like in in terms of like how much he was actually at, at the crease. Yeah, sure, like, sure. You know, he got a good ball early in the first innings, which can happen, and then the second innings had a really weird brain fade where he <laughs> completely lost track of where his stumps are, and it looks hilarious. Not uh, himself. Yeah, he 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 dummied the ball, and it let went onto went onto his stumps from a. It was a very very weird bit of bit of cricket, um, and is the kind of thing that makes you look incredibly stupid. Do you think there's more to that wicket, though? In the sense, like, was it just like a one-off ball, or do you, is that a guy whose confidence is just shattered, who has, who's just sort of has the yips right now? People, they, who, people who watch that game more closely than I did said that he actually looked pretty good up to that point. Okay. Like, even, like, his defensive shots looked solid, and, like, he was he, he seemed to be moving, moving well. Um, he's a good-looking player in that regard, which always seems to like, people seem to like. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you know, sometimes he can look a bit uncertain and like he's sort of poking at it. But like, uh, by all accounts, he did actually look quite, quite decent in like. And Abhimanyu Yuishwaran didn't take his chance in either of those, either of those tests, and was kind of poking, poking outside off stump and uh, and and things like that. 
having come off an incredible run in first class cricket. Um, so I don't, I don't really think we're going to know. Um, I, we're not going to know if if Rohit can't play the first test. I don't think we're going to know who is going to open until the team gets named at the toss because they're <laughs> going to try and take every single ex- um, opportunity to look at players in that kind of extended centre wicket practice, which is probably <laughs> right. But the issue is that now that so rather than creating a sense of uh, look, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. We've got two really good options. We'll make that call. It'll be fine. He's he's the way that it's been presented now is uh, we don't really know what's going to happen, uh, and I think that that is where someone with not only the the tone and the uh, demeanor of Gautam Gambir, but his lack of subtlety. Um, probably isn't going to help. And his lack of experience. We talked about the Mourinho thing, like, oh, he's got that tongue-in-cheek. Mourinho's been doing this for decades now. Gautam is just getting into this coaching role. His first coaching role happens to be probably the most top-five pressure-filled coaching roles internationally in the world. Um, any sports, I think, I, I completely under, like agree with you where you got to keep some things tongue-in-cheek, close to the chest, don't announce who's going to be the opener, or really an ounce of what's going to go on in the scouting process but I think Gautam was just kind of shooting from the hip and he's like you ask me the question I'm going to answer the question whether you like it or not but it doesn't and come I, across like that does it it doesn't come across as him being honest and open and uh <laughs> and like letting you in what it comes across about is that he's having the selection meeting and the dilemma in public and that those are and like maybe I don't know how much any of this matters is very like journalists we love psychoanalyzing people from uh from press conferences and seeing how that uh because we've got no cricket to to we've got no like act We've got nothing else to go on, but it like it, it it the the impression it creates going into the series is not great. Talking of of of, of that, um, the pressure. I, I just want to mention one thing um, that maybe in the future might take a bit of pressure off Gotti. Um, Hamid Chami is returning to competitive cricket after a, a, about the best part of a year, um, so that's that's good news for him. Uh, for Shami, for it's good news for, for Indian fans generally, um, and I think just lovers of, of, of bowling and probably for Gotti as well. Um, building on what you said earlier about Gillespie and Gotti um, and pressure, do you think it's time India just became up to date? Because they've got a history of being resistant to change. We know Indians are stubborn generally, um, but but do you think do you think it's time they kind of split the role, test and and, and like sort of white ball? Or, I mean, it's, I mean, it's I kind of de facto, should... it's, kind of, it's kind of de facto happening anyway, isn't it? Like the T20 series, like how many we've seen so often recently, India having a completely separate white ball squad touring at the same time as the test team. So it kind of happens by default anyway. <laughs> what about I, the coaching stuff? Though? I mean, there, the there is a, to be, that, that's what I mean, particularly. But there is, there is a separate team. coaching stuff. I, I actually, I do think that split format coaching is something that India should look at. Um, because of uh, because of the demands and because of the um, because of the sheer amount of cricket that India play. I mean, England actually weirdly have have now gone back to having uh, uh, a coach uh, across across all formats, but I don't, that wasn't their plan, and it wasn't mm. it wasn't something that they wanted to do. They've had to do it because. Uh, because Matthew Mott didn't do a very good job, and they've kind of had to uh, kind of bring everything back into in, into into BMAT. But even even England don't England do play a lot of cricket, and they do have uh, like quite often sort of two separate squads going at uh, uh, at, at the same time. But in that um, circumstance, wouldn't you also say you'd say England? You know, you tried it, fair play, and it just so happens that your Test team are playing like one day. So and you've got a one of the all time greats of white ball cricket playing. Well, not that he wasn't good at tests, but uh, is your coach anyway? So actually, there's it's it's a bit more joint up to kind of combine those roles again. Yeah, a little bit. I, th- I think that yeah, Bre- Brendan McCall in a lot of ways was a more obvious choice for the one day team than he was for the test team when he took over. Um, and he can kind of do a similar job in the sense that. 
he's a very good like, inspirational leader. He's very good at bringing people with him. He's very good at bit giving people confidence and creating that space for self for self expression. Um, and 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 the England the England management and uh, senior leadership is much more joined up with its with its team and its cricketing management than India's is. Um, there, there's there's no one model that's going to work for everyone. I but I do think it's something that India should should try and should then allow that white ball team under. Obviously, you you have someone supervising it. You have like a director of cricket or something. You have some some oversight and some yeah. some some sense of the communication so that you don't have so the players have a clear idea of what's going on. But would you? Sorry. But um, it would allow those white ball that white ball coach to kind of build his own team and his own identity rather than feeling like as it kind of does at the moment, like you've been, you've had the job I didn't really want to do kind of fobbed off onto you. Yeah. I mean, look, there's a slight difference at the moment with the, the ECB set up and the rub key um, is at the head. Um, and he has been a, you know, a, a color commentator essentially is what he's been um, certainly involved in analyzing the game from a TV point of view, um, but also as a former player and he's in charge. Um, BCCI, I have, you know, yes, Jay Shah involved now, who's not been in cricket, but actually that's not unusual really for, for the BCCI anyway. I and mean, we've had people like Srinivas and Domia, they, they weren't um, cricket people in that regard. They've been kind of other, you could say, no, politicos or bureaucrats. Professional you know? administrators, yeah. Exactly. And, they, and, Polit- and then, Politicians, really. I mean, they yes. did, India did for a while have Ravi Shastri as that, that sort of team director role, but it didn't last very long. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, look, they've had they've had Gavaskar and and uh, Binny involved, but those, I think, generally speaking, are fewer. That th- those kind of appointments don't happen as much as the kind of the politicos, and generally they're going to be more intransigent because they have they're more kind of call it process, or well, maybe not even process, just policy orientated. Of this is the way things yeah. are done, uh, and, and also they've got a con- they've literally got a constituency to play to in some cases. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Current. Who would you like to be the the coach? If or how would you like the coaching to be split? If if we could get to that, if the people uh, over there at the BCCI Towers are listening to the po- this podcast right now, so you know what, those three dudes with glasses and um, various shades of beards have some ideas. What, who, what are you telling them? What should they do right now? There's so much cricket. There's so much cricket. I think you just, it's just it's it's borderline negligence to not delegate. I think you do. I think especially at this rate, we don't know who's going to play on which team. We don't know who's traveling. Um, it's hard to keep track of both series is going on. I can't imagine what it is for the players. Um, and it has to just be a mental sort of push and pull. How short their leashes are. Uh, one bad innings, does that mean they'll never play again? Does that mean where do they stand in the T20 squad or the ODI squad? I do like the idea of two, um, completely different to who we are, like the the threat of Indian cricket. Um, but I like trying something new. I think we're in a new regime. Like I said, I don't expect – I think the Border Gavaska Trophy wouldn't surprise me for Whitewash 5-0. So I'm just sort of looking at this as a, a retirement tour, for lack of a better word, for our – for Rohit and Virat. So I think this could be a whole new time to start a new regime, to try everything uh, different. You mentioned the word delegation. Um, I think what, what that kind of draws to mind is that this whole operation is, and you said sending people here and there, it reminds me a bit of just an Indian family business. Delegation is not a word that happens. Random cousins get sent on random missions and side quests all the time. <laughs> and, and, and like it somehow works, but we're not quite sure what the hell's going on. Um, and just in that word delegation, you've kind of spurred those thoughts in my head. Yeah. I, uh, to, to VV, VVS, VVS Lakshman is, co- is, is, yeah. is de facto head coach for, kind of acting head coach for this uh, South Africa white ball tour. I don't mm-hmm. think he has a formal coaching role in the same way as he did under Rahul Dravid. He's essentially mm-hmm. doing the job that he was doing previously, except it's no longer his job. Indian family business, I'm telling you. 
Like, doesn't that make it hard for the coaching for whatever it is to, like, really, like, sink your teeth into something? You're like, I don't know if I'm going to be doing this exact role in a month or in two weeks if I'm going to be carrying the kits for the guys. Like, there has to be something a little bit more concrete where the coaches can back themselves and be like, all right, this is my design role. This is what I'm here to do. This is what I set out to do, and this is how I hope to execute it. If they, if everything is like, I don't even realize VVS was pseudo coaching this thing. No, I, I'll, you know, I will confess. I just had to look it up because I knew there had to be someone, yeah. but yeah. I had to look it up. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. See, that's and this is what we do. This is what, this is what you do for a living. That's what you're in tune to. Um, if there's no there's no clarity. Uh, like I said, Gautam was a little bit of an oddball, no coaching experience. So trim the fat, sort of molded into what we expect and I think a lot of this they have to be asking the players I'd have to imagine like what does Rohit want what does Virat want what does Boomer want I would hope I, I, I'm not sure that the players have any say in this I none I, see I, I don't the, not after Curly got rid of Kumble. I don't think they're bothering that's a very rare example that that happens <laughs> because you know India doesn't have a players union hmm well, no, it's just because Cody is who Cody is. There's was. no formal represent. There's no formal representation. There's. It, it's hard to know how much. I don't think that seniors' culture exists anymore, uh, because players do have a, a bit more self-expression. But India, Indian players don't tend to get involved in kind of live administrative disputes because they don't feel empowered to, and they don't. They don't have for all the money and for all of the. Uh, status and for all of the fame, there's no formal processes for them to actually have any uh, any input. And I, how much you would ask the players in 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 general, you would try and get a sense of you know you would observe particular coaches and how they work with players uh, and how uh, and how that interaction goes. I would be. I would be very surprised if there's if the players are if the players were consulted much about uh, about the coaching setup. At, at least, certainly not. They might have been asked at the very end of the process, perhaps. Kind of, we're going to go with this guy. Do you think it's okay? Uh, or like, you know, speak now, I'll forever hold your peace, type of thing. But. I, whether you should have them as an active participant in the process is one thing, but it just in the way that Indian cricket is set up, with how how limited in terms of their um, how much they're told to just stay in their lane, players are. I'd be very very surprised if they if that if if that happened. Okay. Um. So, well, I guess the VVS is probably the, the most obvious choice if they do anything along those lines because he's already. In situ, but again, that doesn't actually necessarily mean anything um, in, in in cricket, particularly Indian cricket. Um, shall we go over to the the Gil Boland Trophy um, or the Boland Gil Trophy, uh, <laughs> or at least the India A? Shall we say India Australia A? Um, what's what happened there? Was it just a, a a premonition? I can't think of the right word now. A prelude to, to what's going to happen. Um, in, in, the, in the proper series, or do you think there was some extenuating circumstances? Um, in... I mean, almost no one's been able to score any runs on either side in that in that series. To uh, to be fair, both teams were both pitches were pretty spicy. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know, it's like Sadarshan scoring a hundred in the uh, in in the first test, uh, and yeah, he's the only batter to score a hundred on either side um, across across what eight innings. Mm. Um, so, oh, sorry, Nicole. Oh no, sorry, uh, Nicole. Gone. Well, you you finish what you saying? Yeah. So I think these are pretty spicy conditions, um, as as those scores would 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 tend to indicate. Um, you know, the two big takeaways. You know, we talked a little bit about the about the opener struggling, but uh the Rujurail again coming in and being very very impressive in tough conditions mm -hmm. there probably isn't a space for him in the in the indian test lineup as it as it stands unless um, you move people around i don't really know how you would because he's not an opener well no, you'd um, put gill up wouldn't you you'd, 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 gill to open and then 
but then you're still then you're basically just sh- shuffling everyone. I don't think Virat Kohli at number three is a no. particularly good idea. Nope. Um, no, I, I, it, I don't think that solves a problem. I don't think that. Well, the answer is obvious. Right. The answer is obvious for India's India's point of view. Um, they've done it before. This time, do it with a spinner instead of a fast bowler. It was in front for time before. Just put Ashwin to open. <laughs> He'd, Why he'd not? Do it. Of course he'd do it. Of course he'd do it. He'd love it. Um, yeah. You know, a, a, a sacrificial opener, um, essentially a pinch blocker. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but there was there was a you know there were pieces saying that you know Jurel might come in if Sarfraz gets found out by by pace and by pace and bounce. And I'm sure like it it's it's but he's he's maybe established himself as the first backup option. I don't think now, his height but... his height might be an advantage, um, uh, Sir Francis, because he you will have less to duck, I think, and he's he's handy at this kind of cheeky. Yeah, you know, I mean, he, 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 yeah, I, he, you know, he he. I think the fact that he likes to say leg side of the ball is actually an advantage, um, because he's not mm-hmm. going to necessarily get himself into into positions where he's trying to hook the ball and and skewing it up in the air. What you might get quite quickly is you know Australia might start with a deep third. Uh, for him, like a fly slip or something, and then we'll see what uh, we'll see what happens. Um, I Sofraz Khan is a very very good cricketer, and mm-hmm. seems like a and I think his ability to and desire to attack is going to be something that uh, I think he should be given as, as long a rope as possible. Frankly, so I I, I think that's as, as much as it's harsh on on Dhruv Jurel. And then the other one was we talked a little bit about it last week, but Prasid Krishna. Uh, yeah, who um, I, I was kind of just shuddering at, but you and uh, KK seem to really love. I think maybe we've just seen different games. Yeah, I, I you know, and in this, this, I mean, the outcome of, of this current series seems to be that he has impressed and is is you know, knocking in the door. Well, he's back to full fitness. He he spent he he had a he was out for a, quite a long time with 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 some injuries through sort of uh, twenty two twenty twenty two. Just at a time when he was starting to establish himself as uh, as a real serious option for uh, for the test team, um, I've the most I've seen him was it was in a tour game, but he was mostly bowling to Indian batters in that tour game and was was hurrying them um, because mm. he's that bit quicker than you think he is. He's tall. He gets the ball to move uh, sharply, mostly into the into the right hander and can move it away a little bit the, the other way as well. Uh, and he can get on a he can get on a run where um, it's very very difficult to start against him because he gets that awkward bounce from a from a length. Um, and I think that with Mohammed Shami, you know, with Mohammed Shami injured, I uh, Prasad Krishna, I think is going to play one or two Test matches in this series. I think he's going to get brought into the squad, and I think he's going to he's going to play a, a little bit because you know Boomer will play as much as possible, but I don't think he can play all five, five matches, matches about, yeah, yeah, yeah. probably. Probably, um, and then you've got Mohammad Siraj, who isn't in his best, uh, is not living his best life right now, and then you've got Akash Deep uh, as your, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, as your, uh, as your other option, uh, who is, you know, clearly talented, but is not uh, someone who you, uh, who is a <laughs> banker, uh, yeah, it's, right, it's right now, and then Harshad Rana, who's obviously uh, very, very. Talented and raw and inexperienced as well, um, so I, I, I like the. I mean, Prasad Krishna is actually is officially in India's uh, test test squad, and I think he he's not a. They don't have the left arm option that they could have gone for, but they do have that point of difference with uh, uh, with Prasad Krishna, um, mm. which is an option I like, and I would not be at all disappointed if India's seam attack in the first test. Was Bumra Siraj and Prasid Krishna? Okay, Karan, did you because of the timing? Did you get to watch any of this game, or did you just not no. want to? You didn't want to register on the on the Cricket Australia website. Yeah, know. no, it's also true. Um, <laughs> no, I watched. I watched a little bit of the controversy. Um, I watched Kale's wicket at least two hundred times, trying to rationalize at one juncture what anything he was trying to do. So um, that wasn't a Schadenfreude then. Yeah. So no, I didn't. I didn't really watch. Um, yeah, I, was, I watched the I watched the T twenty. There's just a lot of cricket going on. So this is let the boys practice. I'll I'll lock in when I need to lock in. 
Um, if I watched that shit live, I'd be fucking infuriated. I'd be gouty out. So it's for the benefit of our listeners, you guys. That and I your mental health. Yes. But I do have a question, mm-hmm. Knuckle. You mentioned Sarfrost having an extended leash with his attacking. I saw your mm-hmm. eyebrows raise when Knuckle said that. Do you think we have too much attacking for a test team? Like, goddamn, so someone just play normal, decent cricket. I think like, not really... Pujar is get... nuts, but like, a, a tweener. Um, I think you're going to get that a little bit from whoever ends up opening with Jaisal. I think Rohit will probably be a little bit more circumspect than than he has. That's been. what I thought in the last innings of the South Africa series, and then he just went up there and barged and just played a ridiculous shot. <laughs> Did basketball ruin Test cricket? <laughs> um, we were talking about India saving Test cricket last week, um, <laughs> and we, I think you'll see. Either Rahul or Ishwaran. Ishwaran is a is a an accumulator type. I don't I don't think so. I I think that I don't think there is too much uh, attacking. I I don't think that the approach is necessarily the problem. Um, I think on potentially slightly flatter pitches, you might, as we think we're going to get in Australia, we don't really know. There's talk of the first pitch in Perth being very very spicy. We'll see. Um, you know, you need to buy time for your for your bowlers to take to take wickets. And uh, look, I uh, and uh, the other option is like, yes, if you had a more accumulator type batter who was clearly good enough to be in this team, sure. But I don't think there are many better options out there in terms of just ability to score runs than 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 Safraz Khan or Rishabh Pant or Jaiswal or. Or you know, I, I think that all of these guys and Truman Gill as well, to a slightly lesser extent, but like he's probably the closest thing to an accumulator actually out of the players you've yeah. mentioned. Yeah, which is saying something. Um, <laughs> yeah, but like you know, we've seen that Pont. Okay, he gets out in the nineties a lot, but he's played some big innings. Uh, we know Yashasvi Jaisal likes to go big. He just loves batting. We've seen Safraz Khan uh, has an appetite for for big runs as as well. You would be far more worried as an opposition bowling a bowler and bowling attack and coach about the possibility of Safraz Khan uh, than you would uh, at somebody coming in with uh, with less destructive capability. Well, if I can flip that around then for you, um, if they'd be more afraid of that, they'd also perhaps get more of a boost. When that player gets out, perhaps with with less runs because they've not not necessarily blocking as much or, or not lost as much at the, at the uh, crease. Potentially, I mean, I think you're always pretty happy when you get one of the opposition's middle order batters out anyway. So I don't think it matters that much. And arguably, you can say you you know you do need that you do need that balance, obviously. Um, and I think you might well see it. Maybe it frees up Virat Kohli to just bat and not worry too much about oh. trying, to, trying to impose himself. <laughs> Do uh, what he did in twenty twenty, right? It, just when just when be the anchor. Well, just just a bat, basically. Oh, but he did. You know, he scored that big hundred in. Okay, it was a pretty flat pitch in Ahmedabad uh, last year against against Australia, where he doesn't have to worry too much about trying to force it and impose himself and be the guy. Because <laughs> uh, you see a lot of his early dismissals, like he's trying to be the guy, and like you know, you know, Virat Kohli has made a pretty damn good career about about that but he doesn't necessarily have to be uh now like it it must be lovely batting with Jesfar when he's going well or batting with Rishabh Pant when he's going well like um you all the pressure is off you and I think that um We've seen Indian batters in the past, or we've seen batters like full stop sometimes, like try and soak up pressure, soak up pressure, soak up pressure. And that's fine. But then if you get out for... But then if you suddenly come to the end of the first session and you're 70 for four, having tried to... All you've done is... Are you actually putting pressure on the opposition? Are you actually tiring them out? Are you actually... Uh, making them change their plans? Are you actually making them bring on bowlers or are you just eating up time? So um, we, we're saying is the pressure really comes from the scoring of runs and you have to be a bit more 
was proactive in the game now because you are looking to score four and a half and over, basically. But see, I also think as a bowler, you don't need to be as proactive because if someone's just accumulating and blocking well, you have to think like, all right, I'm going to need a good ball to get him out. If a guy's just sort of heaving and destructive, you're like, all right, I could get Seraphroth getting the, out on a full the, possibly. The, yeah, I mean, the flip side of that is that, and again, all of these things, you can rationalize all of these things. Mm -hmm. the, the flip side of that is you would think that if you're Pat Cummins or Josh Hazelwood or Mitchell Stark, if I just keep bowling my best ball often enough, I'll get him out. Yeah. And if you're not being put off your line of length at any point or having to think about other plans, or if you can start making a test bowl and thinking about something other than taking wickets, that is a victory. Um, yeah, I was thinking of like me as a bowler. I was like, I've got one good ball every over. So the other five, if I can still get a wicket, that'd be nice. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, someone, <laughs> someone who might be thinking about that is uh, is Mohammed Siraj, um, who you know, as you guys said, is not particularly having a good time at the moment. Probably maybe too much police work going on. But do you um, do you think perhaps Australia might be good for him? Not just the uh, the conditions to bowl in the pitches, but also just the crowd, the hostility might just charge the energy. Him a bit. Yeah. The energy, yeah. Yeah, there's a little bit of that, isn't there? There's a little bit of um, a machine to rage against. Um, Delugu film villain energy, maybe WWE heel energy. I don't know. He needs to get a little bit of that. Um, a little bit of that. A little bit of that. Sajid Khan. A little bit of that. Give it a twirl. Give it a sneer. Um, it's not the end of his day. It can slightly look. Siraj can look a little bit like the henchman, the kind of guy who leans around the big tough guy and goes. Yeah, uh, um, which if he can just, I always get the impression with Siraj, if he can just settle into a spell and not try too much early on and just kind of hit a groove, then he's, then he's a lot, then he's a lot yeah. better. Like sometimes he, you can see he kind of tries for a bit, little bit too much magic early on. He tries to, uh, tries to like swing the ball away from from leg stump. And look, I applaud the ambition. Like, I, I'm, I'm yeah. Uh, that, so like, clear your mind the ball, basically. Sorry, Karen, you, you you were cut out there. Yeah, so, no, I just sort of think with Siraj is similar with Shami. Mean, there, there also needs to be a short leash on their, on their sessions, on their spells. If they don't have it, like after three or four overs, you got to pull it. I know I've thought about this before with. Specifically, Shami, and I'm sure I can think of instances with Siraj where we push him in that fifth over, in that sixth over, and he sort of gets torn apart. If he doesn't have it after three or four, yank him out, put in a spinner for two or three, maybe get him back in the groove. So there is some time. Yeah, we, saw, well, we saw that. We've seen that on the last two tours, haven't we? We've seen Ushman bowling quite early in some of these mm -hmm. uh, in some of these games, and I think that's a very I think that's a very very good idea. Like, you know, because line, like, line, line exploit, exploits bounce, so I think. That there's if you've got spinners who can work with bounce, why not use them? Yeah, yeah no, completely. I, I, I certainly don't think there'll be any fear about bringing Ashwin on, uh, Ash, Ashwin on early. Like Jadeja's got a great record against Steve Smith, uh, so that might be a, that might be a thing that happens early. Like, the one thing I wouldn't worry about too much is proactivity and bowling changes, um, from uh, from Rohit or either from or from Bumrah if he uh, for whichever test he. Uh, he he takes over um, that that in in a you know the bowling isn't so much the part of the team that I think anyone's worried about for all of the for all of the people saying <laughs> criticizing Ashwin and Jadeja after that New Zealand series um, I think the the bowling whether this is justified do, do or not, you know, it gives you, know, you more. That... It gives you more of a sense of uh, maybe it's just maybe it's just because of the nature of bowling where you get you get another chance. But it just gives you it gives you a sort of more of a sense of uh, of optimism. Okay. Well, yeah, and the the ceiling, the floor is not nearly as low. The ceiling might not be as high as the batting, but the floor is not nearly as low. Yeah, and uh, some of that is just the nature of batting, isn't it? Is that yeah, probably yeah, yeah like. Uh, your 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 mistakes tend to be um, tend to be cricket ending. Yeah, well, like I, I can see the bowlers giving up like anywhere from like two hundred fifty to four hundred runs. I can see the batters putting up a total of seventy or five hundred. 
Yeah. On any given match. So that's that's more of my issue. Okay. Should we move forward? Um because then England is after Australia. And I, I'm not sure I think that might still be too soon for Shami, but I'm sure they're trying to get uh, We're talking Champions Trophy? Yeah, which comes afterwards, right? We'll get into yeah. that. Also, I was working trying to work chronologically. <laughs> but yes. Uh, the, 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 I mean look, one of the articles talking about Shami even highlighted the possibility of him being added to the squad for Scored for Australia, uh, which seems a massive risk. Yeah, um, oh, yeah. The guy's been out for a year. He's a fast bowler. I mean, <laughs> I think let him that, get some match. That, that seems game. that seems incredibly optimistic. Yeah, I think someone yeah. just wanted to, uh, to get some clicks to sell some ads. I think in that case, which is probably what it was. Yeah, the the white ball series uh, <laughs> against England at the start of twenty twenty five seems more realistic. Yeah. Um, white ball, good, good, good segue there. Um, Champions Trophy, lots of drama. Um, Karen, I'm gonna start with you, you with this because I know the last time we, we discussed a, a topic similar to this, um, Knuckle and I had kind of most of the word on it. Um, the first thing I would say is that obviously, look, we, we know that the ICC, in their infinite wisdom, decided to give a tournament to Pakistan, which it was pretty obvious. India weren't going to go to. Um, and now there's plenty of precedent in terms of teams opting out of, of going to places for matches for whatever reason. Um, normally it results in a, in, a, in a penalty points or deduction or forfeit or whatever. In this case, it seems to be like, no, no, you've got to play. And you've got to come. Um, just give me your thoughts on the whole debacle shall we say because let's face it champions trophy no one i don't think anyone really cares in all honesty about about this um and i was joking with knuckle beforehand um that that you know perhaps they should have just killed the champions trophy when india won it and maybe that's what's going to happen with the test championship as well once india win it they're like, all right yeah stop this now let's just focus oh, on so <laughs> um give me your thoughts on 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 this um situation where pakistan is saying well play here we don't want to do hybrid. If you want to do a hybrid and want to move it away, then we're not going to come. Um, and yeah. India's position as well, actually, on, on, on not going to Pakistan. Yeah, so it's going to be a lot harder for me to talk about what they said. It was like a threat. And like the government told them in the political and the historical, that's not my forte. I'm not going to act like it is. We'll do um, <laughs> Yeah, and I do think like if the security is actually a concern, then obviously you can't bring them, counterpoint, other teams have toured there without a hitch, whatever. Um, if... Like, all the politics inside, I've obviously, I want to watch India play Pakistan. I think the atmosphere would be great. I think it'd be spectacular for the sport, for the countries, so on and so forth. Um, uh, Pakistan is, like, precious. It's adorable. No one actually gives a shit if Pakistan doesn't play or not. So, like, that, like, argument isn't as substantial. But I do, I don't think they should move it because India doesn't play it. I get it. Like, they need India's money. I understand that. But, like, ideally, they play that tournament. India gets a break. It's a win for all. I don't care if we win or lose the Champions Trophy. Granted, until we play it, then I'd want to win it. But if India doesn't want to go, it, Pakistan shouldn't have to move it. I understand the pickle that the ICC's in, where oh, that's what fifty percent of the revenue stream is gone if India's not in it. Um, but it's it's really unfair to Pakistan to have a have this tournament ripped away just for that. And I kind of agree with Pakistan in the sense that don't host a hybrid tournament. That you're um, what's it called? Sort of desensitizing the this and making it more normal and accepted than I think it necessarily should be. And it'll also be crap. I mean, that's the one thing I guess we're all unanimous on. None of us it seems, uh, none of us think that Pakistan should be um, losing the tournament because India don't want to go. Um, that, I mean, if the, that that is basically in the ICC. ICC have decided to hand the hosting to Pakistan. If India don't want to go, then play without India, I think is, it seems to be what we're all if, saying. If, if you are, if Pakistan are going to host tournaments, then they've got to host tournaments properly like anybody else. Mm. And if the yeah. ICC want them to, that to happen, which I think is right, like Pakistan is a is a major cricketing nation, and it should be hosting tournaments like any other major cricketing nation, or even some relatively minor cricketing nations. Uh, but like, you were saying, you were saying, I was going to say, what's your birthday? I was going to say the United Arab Emirates. I just want to ask Karen this question: Karen, what's your birthday? August tenth. No, you're going to say born on the 4th of July. Sorry, carry on, Nicole. <laughs> um, 
But the, <laughs> I'm so confused, sorry. Uh, the... If the, if the ICC you ruined your thing about um, what that's you, fine. If the, train if, of thought, the stupidness. if the ICC give give a tournament to whoever it, whoever it is, and it, if they want to give it to Pakistan, then they have to say, right, no, you're playing in Pakistan because that's where the tournament is. And <laughs> I was going to say, and we run this sport. Unfortunately, everybody knows that's not true. Um, the, For the money, huh? Oh, I mean, it's even more complicated when you consider who's the actual senior office holders of the uh, <laughs> of, of the ICC. Um, just today, the PCB have asked the ICC have asked the they have asked the ICC to ask the BCCI for written confirmation that they are unable to play the Champions Trophy. Uh, so, is so is you know, it's like a it's like a rom com where you're you're saying, yeah, tell Jake I'm not talking to him. Uh, mm -hmm. Exactly the, that, right? It is exactly that. It's like you, you, you. It's like almost like they want India to come, but they're, they're kind of paying a bit hard to get a little bit at the same time. Well, it's either that, or they don't think that the IC that uh, the India will return their calls, um, which is actually <laughs> probably true. Um, unfortunately, we had the situation about ten years ago now, where uh, Shadi Khan, who was then the, the head of the PCB, um, and since whose departure, the PCB has got. Significantly worse. Dramatic. Um, when... is the not, not not worse. Dramatic. <laughs> uh, significantly more Pakistan. Um, the deal, deal. Uh, okay, he, fine. he he went to he went to India to try and reestablish relations, and basically couldn't get a meeting with the BCCI. Yeah. Um, see, I'll... Have you ever tried to get? Uh, have you ever tried to get anything done by an Indian bureaucrat? I mean, I can't. I, I don't find it hard to believe you couldn't organize a meeting with anyone there. Especially uh, no, but e no, but equally, I'm not the head of a potentially major lucrative part, um, fellow cricketing nation. Um, Dude, this week, right? An MP Samosas went missing, and there was an inquiry because it's like, so this is what this is India. Sorry, go on. Samosa go um, inside. I mean that that is a, that is a scandal, and something <laughs> must be done. Um, the so the, so the the PCB have said that they want written writing and, and a justification. Um, which I be, don't think they're probably going to get. I don't know if they'll be allowed to send one because uh, this is essentially now a governmental matter, and um, I would be surprised if uh, if an official communication of that type were were going to be allowed and were going to be made public. Um, they have also pointed out, and I think there is quite a lot of justification here, is that. Uh, it was three years ago that the ICC announced that the Champions Trophy would be in Pakistan, and it's only now that we're getting uh, objections to it. Um, but but we knew this. Well, sure, we knew this, but it's not unreasonable to think that it's not wholly unreasonable to think that uh, right if you that two and a half years uh, or three years <laughs> on, like a three year gap means maybe you're not that bothered about it. But an Asia Cup has happened in between, right? And, they, and there was this debacle with the Asia Cup. And the, so yeah, they, when, when they did the when they did the the hybrid model, uh, which so, they were annoyed about, which they were annoyed about. And 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 look, Pakistan also Pakistan got really shabbily treated ahead of the ODI World Cup in India, where they didn't the team didn't get their visas until the very last minute. No <coughs> Pakistan fans were allowed to, or journalists were allowed to travel from Pakistan to to <laughs> India, and. I'm, I'm, kind look, of, I'm kind of with Gurren on that because that's kind of how I think it's funny. It's, so it's funny. stupid, but it's funny. It's so childish. Um, <laughs> yeah, it the whole, the whole, child. the whole thing. <laughs> look, look, I don't want to. Look, there's a lot of serious emotion, a lot of historical context, and a lot of historical weight, and uh, it's. But zooming out, a lot of the actual ways in which this has played out have been incredibly childish. Um, just to go back to the Shadi Khan story, he he said when he got back to Pakistan that the only contact he'd had uh, from anyone at the BCCI was the then BCCI president Shrinivasan's wife telling his wife where to go shopping in Delhi. <laughs> as long as she came back with some good saris, I mean, I'm, I'm all yeah, pretty yeah, 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 yeah. Karol, uh, Karol sent it to Karol Um yeah. Well, look, Nicole, uh, I mean, look, I, I know I was um, taking the, taking the piss a bit there and, and winding you up. Um, 
Well, but it's not. It, it's it, not. No, like, there's a between. lot of absurd. There's a lot of absurdity going on. There's a lot that is absurd, and I think that the recognition of the absurdity is actually quite quite useful here. But yeah. but what ultimately? If no, no, I actually agree with you. It's not. I don't think it's acceptable actually to be giving the head. Of but the, he to play off board. your. Hold on, bro. I, I don't think it's acceptable right. really. If the guys come over to meet you, that you give them the runaround. I don't think that's right. Um, like Roger Bailey no. went. He 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 had. He, I mean, as much as I was, you know being cheeky with what you were saying and, and, and about that. But I genuinely actually agree with you there. Um, yeah, I think it, Roger Billy went and, and, and was treated well. Yeah, it was it was shameful. And look, there's does anybody doubt, by the way, that if India did go to Pakistan, they would be treated like heroes? Well, no, well, yeah, no, absolutely. They, they'd be treated unbelievably well. Um, actually, I'm going to come back to that. Just let, let Karen say what he was saying. Um, and actually, it's based on our well, last Well, like, Nagel made the rom-com comment where he's just like, oh, tell Jake I'm not talking to him. This one's slightly different. It's like, Hey Jay, tell Jay I'm not talking to him. It, the ICC and the BCI, like they're just it's one true. person, so it's two people having a three person conversation. So I don't know if that will work. <laughs> Carry on. Yeah, it's just, it's just Jay Shah just swapping hats. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, they're like ICC recommended the BCCI. It's like Jay texted himself and he read it on his cell phone instead of his laptop. He's like, oh, breaking news, guys. Jay on say is in his room going, "Who run this mother, Jay?" Um, yeah. It's a little yeah, bit like there's, there's, a, there's an episode of there's an episode of Thirty Rock where uh, where Jen Krakowski's character dates someone who is uh, who is a Jane Krakowski's character drag queen and <laughs> turns up to the event <laughs> half as half in normal half in streetwear uh, and half in drag uh, play, playing both parts um, and. Th- th- yeah, there's a lot. BCCI of- J is for sure drag J, right? I don't J- want to. I don't want to associate the high and noble art of drag with Jay Shah. I don't um, think Jay's also. Quick. He's he's not he's not head of ICCI officially. Um, ITC should I say officially yet? Yeah, anyway, yeah, yet, yet. Yeah. Transition. Yeah. Really, um, you know, we all know that you had this conversation with your new boss going, "Yo, tell me yourself." Yeah, yeah you get invited handover. to parties. That happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. There, there's a handover period. Um, what Where... would be hilarious is when when I, Jay Shah is running the ICC and tournaments get handed to Pakistan. That would be either trolling of an elite level or just like real kind of madness. But... Well, you you would then get a lot of very long think pieces about who's on which committee. Um, <laughs> the which actually would be quite useful because frankly no one knows at this point. Um, the and the the, yeah, the fact that. We are still in a situation where we've where one board is able to essentially hold a veto on other con- on another country holding a proper tournament, and we know all of the reasons why, and we know all of the institutional barriers that are in place to the ICC acting as an actual governing body. It is ridiculous. It is absurd. It is not the way a proper global sport should be run. No other sport would run itself like this uh, if it has any pretensions to be an actual global sport that is taken seriously. Uh, And I don't really see a way out of this, unfortunately. Um, But the current situation, accepting the current situation as, as a good or ideal one, is just not on. Yeah, I mean, look, I think um, there's a there's a few different strands with this, um, and my position's kind of evolved over the last few years um, for various reasons, and it's, it's almost kind of what's the word schizophrenic in some ways, um, and I explain why. Um, look, Joshi, tell Joshi I'm not talking to him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> look, no, as look, as a Punjabi, we we are closer to Pakistanis, right? We, for the for the large part, we speak the same language. There are a lot of similarities, culture. Obviously, in the UK, you 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 mix more than ever, and so <clears throat> there's always that wistfulness. That actually, I mean, look, the Germans have this concept of Mao and Kopf. Knuckle does the French stuff. Um, I do the German stuff. Um, there's this concept of Mao and Kopf, which means wall in your head, um, and it, it came about from um, after. The fall of the Berlin Wall, really, 
so the, the 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 communist side and obviously the capitalist side, shall we call it, um, although they were effectively won, there was still a wall in the head. Now, it, I I think I always liken India and Pakistan, particularly obviously Punjab, to the Germanies to North and South Korea in the sense that actually it's not they're not two different countries in that sense. They are essentially the same people that have followed different ideologies, either to statehood and beyond. Um, and their thinking has progressed or regressed, depending on whichever way you look at it, um, based on that as the generations have gone by. And on a human level, always you find that actually like we have the same banter, do you know what I mean? Or, or it is actually you're very similar on a, on a village level or whatever. So there's always that. And actually that's sometimes why certain things kind of annoy me more. Um, but also why I look to, to, to find um, common ground as much as anything else. Now, in terms of purely from a cricketing point of view or from a, from a governance point of view, um, and I guess from a nation point of view, I would say that, that as with any other country who, for example, with, with all the, the stuff was going on with Zimbabwean farmers, um, New Zealand, England um, didn't want to, to play those, to play and then forfeited that was their, their right and their choice to do so. And it was right that they forfeited the points. Yeah. Um, I think Australia, if someone didn't want to go to Sri Lanka, again, their right to do so, but they forfeit the points. And I think in actually in this situation... I think there were teams also in the 2003 World Cup who didn't travel to Kenya. Yes. Which is part of why Kenya got to the semifinals. Not the whole reason. Sure. But, but they they took the decision and they paid the consequences in a sporting sense. Yeah. And I think that's that's... That's but then then fine. Like if you you want to decide that for reasons beyond sport, um, ideological or otherwise, um, that's fine. That's your right to do so. But then don't accept points. Now, obviously, in that case, because they didn't. I mean, even though Australia and, and England kind of ran the game for a long time, it, they didn't pull out the tournament. So it wasn't the case where um, the money was going from a tournament. Well, in they also case, they weren't they weren't also but they weren't saying that. Zimbabwe couldn't host teams games against other teams, or that Sri Lanka couldn't, or that Kenya couldn't. Is that, uh, is that and is that is that, is that so? This is my my ignorance. Actually, I'm, I'm saying explicit. Have India explicitly said don't have the tournament without us, or they've said we're not coming because I think those are two different things. And or and is it then a case of the rest of them going? Actually, if India aren't coming, where's the money? We're not coming, and that that's why I'm not well, quite clear on. Well, the BCCI, as far as we know, have said we are not coming. Uh, yeah, they they have not said I mean, they haven't said don't host the uh, the tournament there, but they've said they're not coming, which undermines the tournament. If sure, one... but they, they could they could though. In, in, I mean, look, they, they, there was this talk about the PSL. Pro- right? They probably they probably want a hybrid model. Uh, they probably Just... want a hybrid model um, for the money. And I can completely understand why Pakistan don't want that because uh, because they're thinking. Uh, right, you're putting another layer of essentially you're making your uh, your governmental policy a logistical problem again. And I would defend Pakistan's right to say that. Actually, yeah, completely. I think, I think they're completely. right to say that. And there is an. And I, I mean, I was going to mention this later, but there is the point here. Very obviously, that it's not that all sporting ties between India and Pakistan are, are, are cut off. Right, this is a particular case. So, um, in other sports. Indians do go to Pakistan. So this is partly, I guess, there's this two sides again to, to, to the cricket question. One, um, is it a case of almost an economic boycott to starve Pakistan for things that the Indian uh, politicians, actually I'd say a large part of the Indian people feel that, that, that Pakistan are doing, namely sending over proxies, essentially, into, into disputed territory. Or... Um, my phone's ringing. It's completely thrown me off my, my thought pattern. <laughs> What's like going? What was the other? It's what you said actually, Knuckle, last time, um, where I was. I was actually kind of laughing a little bit at this this thought. Like, I was like, "Yeah, they're really saying this is for for safety reasons." And you said that you made the point that um, I'm surprising. A surprise, commerce hasn't taken um, the 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 uh, precedent yeah, the, over the, anything else. Yeah, so that, the, that the, 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 the profit motive for for India playing in Pakistan is pretty obvious. And, and that the, had the, me thinking. <laughs> that, that had me thinking that maybe, perhaps, there was something that I was missing. Perhaps, actually, there might be a genuine threat. And actually, 
if you are an organization but based in, in, in Pakistan, of which that's not the Indian saying it, there's the US, France, whatever saying it, if there is this kind of organization with nefarious motives, an Indian cricket team is a prized target that maybe a, a hockey player, a kabaddi player isn't my, and they don't necessarily my, care about that. My my take on that was looking at it more from the Indian side and particularly from the from the government side. No, I agree. Because because it's become quite clear that the government, I think we've almost had explicitly confirmed now that the government are telling, are setting policy for the BCCI. Um, and I mean, the BCCI have essentially said that because they said the government won't let us, <laughs> have not given us permission to travel. So I'm, I think looking at actually... it more, I'm looking at it from the government side, is that the the antipathy and the status of Pakistan as enemy is now so strong that, and because cricket is seen as such an integral part of India's self-image, more so than hockey, more so than football, more so than anything else, really, um, that we cannot, the, the government are then essentially saying, we cannot allow our major national, international cultural export to be, uh, to contradict our policy of, uh, of just short of enemy status with 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 pakistan yeah that's that's where i'm that's 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 my thinking about where the 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 counteract the counteracting force to the profit motive is yeah and i think it's 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 actually essentially an economic sanction really is what they're doing to pakistan uh with this we're, we're, compared to the others for all those reasons you mentioned there they know Pakistan. I mean, Ramiz Raj just said it himself, right? We we run on business, Indian business houses. Um, if India really wanted to screw Pakistan over, and I think there was talk talk, talk of this, and thankfully they didn't do it, was to to basically say if you're playing a PSO, you don't get to play IPL. Um, that would really kind of ruin things. There, you mentioned enemy country, and as much as look, that is the prevailing view in India, and I completely understand why because of a category of, of events that we've talked about in the last time what i am thankful for um is that the bcci haven't mentioned that whereas uh the pcb i think it was the chairman was zaka ashraf for someone did refer to india as, as dushman mulk enemy country before the last world cup when in india which i thought was quite outrageous um so look i would have i was one of these people who absolutely was like hey man let's just let's just play sport knowing also that it would be fantastic for, for indians to go over there and and, and do well um and also the troll in me, actually, because of ideological differences, not only likes um, BC Pakistan or for obvious reasons, but I'm thrown back to to, to the 2000 World Cup where um, Shah Malik and look, there's a lot of banter with Shah Malik when he was married to Sanya Mirza would call get Jiju um, because Sanya Mirza was Indian fans' collective sister, which is a nice banter. But he said something about um, this is for all the Muslims in the world, and, and Irfan Pathan's mum ripped into him. Um, which was also quite nice because I find that a large part of Pakistani society actually has a lot in common with far-right Indians um, in that they seem to think that Muslims in India can't do anything Indian, which is is absurd um, because Indian Muslims are Indian. And it's always actually quite nice when Zahir Khan or Afan Patan used to to cock them because actually it used to kind of make them question look, the things they were told, right? Even, <laughs> also I mean? when, uh, even also, the Patan brothers literally grew up in a mosque. Yeah, the, the, their father was a, was an imam, that, and that was, yeah. and the dude is proudly Indian because actually to say that someone who is Muslim would not be proud to to be Indian and is actually only doing that to fit in is actually deeply Islamophobic and is the same kind of behavior I mean, it, that those playing, idiots. It's playing, in, it's, yeah, you know, I mean, just want to say, you know, the right wing, douche, playing to the right wing talking points. Yeah, yeah, and these people, people who say that in Pakistan, are no different to the douchebags who are having a public Muhammad Shami um, yeah. in, in Australia. I mean, those people, oh, those people, don't have the intelligence to listen to this podcast anyway. But for me, those are the same kind of people, and that kind of, I think that is obviously a broader point beyond cricket. But I think there is something to be said for that. But the thing that really upset me was when is what well, upsets me is when players who played in an era when there were good cricketing ties with India and they had friendly relationships, went to each other's houses. Garan's heard me say this before. I said it's with him, Ritank. Um, when they have good relationships, been to each other's houses um, and are friendly, when they say stupid stuff, that bothers me. Um, I'll give the examples of Shab Akhtar on that famous video talking about taking over India. Um, what uh, Wakar Yunus said after... 
India were, were rightly beaten, actually, by Pakistan. And what he said about Mohammed Rizwan, he said him doing praying in front of a stadium full of Hindus was special for me. And that's an outrageous thing to say. Um, uh, Kamran Akmal, again, this uh, this summer in the World Cup, talking about Arshdi Baran Bajgit. These are outrageous things to say. Um, and Indian commentators, Indian cricket players, former cricket players, say a bunch of stupid stuff. They're not often the most educated or even brightest or most, most couth because they've got a lot of money. They've probably not been educated as much because they played cricket and had to be dedicated. But thank God they don't say stupid stuff like that, which is actually, I think, beyond the pale. And so for that re- part of the reason, I was actually, you know what, screw these guys. Like, we don't need to go um, as much as it's fun to beat them. Now, I think there needs to be a, a bit of consistency. Do you, uh, and I guess maybe Azerbaijan Armen- and Armenia are an example of this um, because, you, you know, I made I was talking about South Africa last time, and you rightly actually pointed the holes in the argument, um, Knuckle. But um, and I'll ask Karen this question first. Do you think it is just a case of India need to carry on boycotting, going to um, Pakistan and just keep playing in ICC tournaments, or do they just handle the, the two point deduction there as well in those tournaments? And actually, should Pakistan say, actually, you know what, we're not coming over either. Screw you. We don't we don't need it. We have as much self respect for ourselves. Um, yeah, I mean, ideally, they work this through and India just goes over and plays. I think India, if they don't play, there should be a punishment for it, as there would be for any other country in any other sport in any other sort of situations like this. Um, I, I mean, ideally, you'd like to say Pakistan would be like, all right, screw it, we're not going to play in those IC, but like, they can't do that. They don't have the luxury of doing that. There's one country, maybe England. Potentially Australia that have the luxury of doing that. Obviously India. But population-wise, um, you would argue I think after India, probably Pakistan is probably the next most populous cricket-playing nation. I'm guessing. But what's like? I'm just talking about the wealth of the board and like the wealth of the sport there. I would imagine. Sure, if you're that. talking about eyeballs, right? Or maybe it's currency devaluation, all that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, so I think that would be the best case scenario. But then, like I was thinking about this while you guys were discussing, in terms of government, um, obviously, like we know, it's them saying that we can't go. That has to be such a big decision in the scheme of things because if you do send them, and God forbid, and I think there's a 0.0001% chance something does happen, but if anything happens, uh, and even even a minute sort of scare where they have to like stay in their hotels for a day, like check out a backpack in a stadium, anything even along those lines, which would happen at American sporting events if a backpack's left unattended to, everyone has to vacate that area. Hmm. The people would be at the politicians' throats. If something like that happens, that's a big liability, which you don't have to take that quote unquote risk if you play in Dubai in theory and stuff like that. So ideally, yeah, India figures this out. We play, you'd like to, if not point deduction, there should be some sort of punitive reaction towards it. Pakistan, unfortunately, doesn't have the luxury to back out. Um, and so, yeah, but it, it, there is a monumental pressure of sending the highest and mighty civilians to Pakistan if you're an Indian government. So, And in, in that case, then, obviously, if, if something was to happen, the Pakistan would live, live it down. So really, Karan, what you're saying is that the BCCI, the Indian government, is saving Pakistani cricket by uh, not putting them in that position. Oh, God. Christ. Um, <laughs> Sorry, that's bad. Um, go on, Michael. <laughs> I mean, that's in, terms of a, in terms of a point selection, the, the, the whole tournament at the moment is in one country. So that... The, the point deduction means essentially you essentially <laughs> yeah. forfeit the tournament. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, no, no, absolutely. In this case, India then doesn't play; is forfeits the tournament. Absolutely. I mean, I think that's the right so thing. Either, for it to either, either is technically in the tournament, but everyone else gets two points from playing India, which would be or be pulls hilarious. out of the tournament and someone else and someone else someone well, else comes Sh- in. Sri Lanka should play, right? Sh- I think Sh- they're the next up, so they should be them. If they say actually no, we don't want to go either. Um, then the West Indies, and then maybe oh, look what we're talking about in the group about a tri series. India might want to, they should do it with like Zimbabwe and the Netherlands play their B team. But well, here's um, a question Would India lose more money by not playing, or would the world lose more money by India not playing? Definitely the latter. You think so? Yeah. I mean, the is still in theory an ICC tournament. Although, having said that, I think a lot of the ICC's money is. Oh, the, the BCCI would make the argument that a lot of the ICC's money is India's money. So how much of it is... But <laughs> but the, the value of the TV rights would, would nosedive if India were not to take part in the tournament. It would also you know, ruin its credibility and, and all of these things. Um, 
my my sense of what might happen is that Pakistan will sort of be pressured into the hybrid model, which nobody really wants. Yeah, for sure. This is going to do buy. I don't think. I think. That but I think. I think that ultimately is what will happen because I don't see any realistic possibility of the Indian government backing down on on this. And unfortunately, Pakistan aren't able to actually they're not fighting on an economically level playing field, so they're not really able to... It would be kind of wonderful if they did hold firm and say, no, we're either holding it all in Pakistan uh, with India or all in Pakistan without India. You guys do what you want. And I would kind of... I would have a lot of respect for that, even if it would be a hugely financially damaging uh, position to take. And... um, I just I don't see that happening, unfortunately, um, because I think the economic imperative. It's, it's interesting. So it, India is resisting, as we've talked about. The Indian government is resisting the economic imperative, but the BCCI is imposing the economic imperative on the rest of the cricketing world, um, and cricket is so poorly run and so uneven and so left well, that's just, that's to, just it's left, like special cuddles that's the reason for that There's not reason left for that. to market forces uh and very very inefficient and monopolizing market forces in this case that we're in a situation where india are kind of load bearing to to these tournaments and so any any sense of equal treatment and any sense of there being someone other than than the people who bring in the most money running the ship is just completely absent. Uh, it's going to say the same until until the USA get involved in a, on a world level on cricket, really, Garth. So it was a little bit yeah. yeah, but also, why don't we veto these like tours to Australia where we're going to get smashed? Let's just not go to that. I'm okay with that. Veto the New Zealand coming to India series. Well, like, what the fuck are we doing? Just What's endless, that? endless Dulip trophy. Yeah, yeah. If, if we're ever about to lose, boycott that. But that may well happen, right? Especially if, if the IPL keeps taking off and it becomes bigger and bigger, it's eventually it's going to become that anyway, right? Uh, especially <laughs> if all the players... I mean, you can't even have a proper Champions League anymore because it's the same players playing for all the franchises all over the world. So <laughs> that was the problem a bit last time, wasn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, so it's even worse now. You know, and then the, the only the only way it works is on Brian Lara cricket. Yeah, yeah. Where you, can, where you can actually where you can actually clone players. And now we have to wait for you're right, JD Vance's son to lead the charge. Yeah, and then they, because his mum's Indian, maybe he will also take over BCC at the same time and unite the two houses, like some House of Dragons, yeah. Game of Thrones kind of shit. Yeah, yeah. thank yeah. Um, yeah. Thankfully, so thankfully, those executive boxes tend not to have sofas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, you're gonna get me in trouble. Uh, talk, talk, you're talking of executive bo- boxes. <laughs> our, our, our friend Shukla Uncle, um, who was eating, what was he eating papaya? Um, in Kanpur, his pitch has been been uh, rated basically awful, or basic, should we, if we use, if we use the like colloquial term. So, um, sorry, Uncle. Do? Just saying. Pitches. Right. <laughs> Life's a pitch. Um, no, uh, guys. Um, any more thoughts on on this PCB drama? <sighs> No, no, nobody, <laughs> nobody comes out of this world, do they? Yeah, and um, yeah, man, it's just crazy that look, this was announced two and a half years ago, and now it's like, oh boy, so this might be a, this might be a problem here. It's, do you think the BCCI forgot? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> they look at their decals. <laughs> Champions <laughs> Trophy, in <Yeah>. Pakistan. <laughs> I think it may be last time because when India came and, and sorry, when Pakistan came to India and, and Pakistan lost because India didn't play Dildo Pakistan, I think that was like a uh, a bit of passive aggressive behavior. 
Uh, I'm probably inspired, but maybe I think it's Gotham could be his idea, probably. And and now this is kind of just they just waited, and the whole thing's just a bit passive aggressive. Yeah, I like the idea. Jay Sean just looked at the G Cal to see if he can like schedule in a quick lunch with like Vera, and he's like, oh shit, guys. <laughs> <laughs> he just like kept on kicking the can down the road. He's like, yeah, it's no, 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 no. My never it, no, the um, the <laughs> in, in my head, it's a little bit like uh, when a messenger comes in with the. Uh, to the king saying that a battle has been lost and then gets uh and then gets punched in the face by the irate king who doesn't like hearing use i am a, it's some flunky some flunky <laughs> i.e someone who actually does work uh comes in and creeps into the office and <laughs> so uh, we're gonna have our and flunky. tells and, and tells <laughs> and, and and tells and tells jay shah uh and and then is seen hurrying from the room a uh, five minutes <laughs> later in tears yeah Hey, so Jay, we're just booking our hotel in Karachi. Do you have any uh, recommendations? He's like, what the fuck? Get out. Get out. Yeah, <laughs> that's all exactly how it went. <laughs> yeah, I think maybe they just, uh, the Indian government needs to be very clear about it, really, then, <laughs> that actually this is indefinite. Because um, in, in I, I mean, they basically their, are. They basically no, I will, are. I will they? use their language. Um, in that they said, obviously, until the this is what they say in, in terms of peace. Until there's there's, there's terror, there's no peace. Um, so in, until, in their view, Pakistan is sending over proxies, there is no no cricket. The other stuff can carry on, but this is this is what's most important to you. Pakistan can say, well, obviously they deny that anyway that they, they do it. Um, so they can say, well, all right, fine, um, we're not doing it. You, you guys are being you're the baddies, and obviously because the other side is always the baddie in both cases. And they just say, all right, cool, we'll, we'll just leave it at that and. Um, We'll carry on playing kabaddi and hockey and carrot board, um, but but nothing else. But cricket is cool. We'll see you in the ICC tournaments, which for some reason we're always uh, faced against each other. Maybe there's a glitch in the AI, um, but the rest of the time, cool. Um, and maybe that's what it is. And maybe actually, India just say, you know what? We'd rather play Pakistan twice in ICC tournaments and New Zealand no times. Because New Zealand beat us and we beat Pakistan regularly. So maybe that's the trade off then, and New Zealand can go to Great. Pakistan because they're getting more and more Indian players anyway, right? Um, so maybe that's just the trade off. Yeah. Equally, though, New Zealand are a good compromise candidate to win anything uh, because nobody really dislikes them that much. It's true. Oh, I don't know. I kind of hated them after the series. Apart from Curran. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I really hated them. I hated them. Like, well, like I said, even in 2007, they, they beat India, like, and India won the World Cup in 2020. So they, they always just seem to be the India's bogey team. Um, and they're getting more and more Indians now, thanks to, um, well, uh, lax immigration policies 20 years ago. <laughs> Essentially. <laughs> Thanks to New Zealand having a small population and therefore a skills deficit. Yeah, yeah. No, no, none, of, none of these um, Jignishas and Ravindras are playing um, rugby, let's face it. There's <laughs> <laughs> the Polynesian bros. Well, Canada might like, be like this in 20 years' time anyway, so um, all, all the um, yeah, all the guys over there. Canada will have a strong cricket team in 20 years. But they won't be able to play anybody because they'll be an international pariah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they'll be able to talk Pakistan. Yeah. All right. Yeah, Papua Papua All right. I think we solved it, boys. Good job. Papua New Guinea for the win. There we go. 20, 20 years. Uh, Canada to purely a Punjab. <laughs> or which side? Oh, dear. Um, <laughs> <Let's>... <laughs> <laughs> That's <Cut. a> bit... <laughs> so, basically... The Radcliffe Club will, Cup will continue in ICC tournaments, but not um, when they're in Pakistan, essentially. Kumble Corner, in which the boys spend an hour and a half and make things worse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> come full circle. Um, so, do, do you think Anil Kumble could be a, a peace ambassador? And do you think Gautam Gambir, after leaving the cricket team, and given his obvious political connections, should be India's ambassador to Pakistan. Just for, just for the bans. <laughs> <laughs> just, just for hilarity's sake. <laughs> we go backwards. <laughs> um, look, the irony in all of this is, is that, that um, Pakistan's neighbours seem kind of cool with India. Um, Afghanistan used to play their home games in India, which is, is quite mind-boggling, even though there's kind of ethnic ties in Pakistan itself, with a lot of the Afghan 
population. So even, even that was, we, we do actually have to wrap this up. But even that was mostly to annoy Pakistan that India started funding Afghanistan. Because oh, they, they used, to, they used to take all their money. They used to take all their money from Pakistan. All of their coaching infrastructure came from Pakistan. Uh, and then as soon as Afghanistan started getting uh, <laughs> seriously competitive, uh, India started plowing all the money in and building them stadiums. I've had a number of situations like in, in the UK where I've met random Afghani dudes. And I don't know whether they just say it just to kind of, um, I don't know, just what's the word, give you bump, as we'd say, a Punjabi. But like, like people ask you for direction on the trains and they're like, you tell them and they're like, Indian? Like, yeah. And they're like, oh, we love India. Not so much like that. <laughs> I'm like, okay, like that, that's that's kind of uncalled for. First, just telling you which direction the train is, and I don't know whether they say that to curry favour or whether there is just because they like the movies more. Um, but maybe in time we will all realise when we discover aliens that actually we are all humans. Um, even Virat Kohli and Kumble, um, who Kohli said he he respects Kumble as a cricketer, which is, I mean, just put a knife through his dagger, right? Uh, a dagger through his heart, right? Um, gentlemen, we are now 90 minutes. Oh, away. and happy birthday, Virat. I love you. Just, just want to put that out there. It was his birthday the other day, and I love him, and he's perfect, and I love him. He's so handsome. Yeah, all but, of those things. Yeah, uh, stunning. Just quit fucking jabbing at the seventh stump one time. Just have some surely. Right. It's, 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 not every, it's not every man who can end up on the front of an Australian newspaper with a Hindi headline. Yeah, the most Australian uh, Indian. Um, and that's that's what's so great about it. Um, right, giving hope to the new generation. It's Cody, not us, really. Um, <laughs> well, Knuckle might be uh, with his insight. Uh, Cody and I are before. I, I'm sure I'm home. I hope I'm not. We just yeah. we just we just bantering here. Um, <laughs> let's leave it there before our producers find us and throw things at us because we've got to edit this down. Um, thank you for listening to this clearly extended edition. Um, of of uh, Kumble Corner Champions Trophy edition, maybe, uh, maybe a bit like the Champions Trophy. This has also gone on a bit too long. Uh, don't forget to follow us on the socials, Kumble Corner, both with K's, obviously. Uh, current is the third one. Um, and hit like, subscribe, <laughs> share your <Yeah>. friends. <laughs> share the classic friends. Triple K. <laughs> yeah, that's all we want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry, fun story. My sister changed her name after marriage um, and she changed her middle name to our surname and I was quite annoyed because her new initials would have been KKK but she dropped her middle name and changed it to J. I would have loved the hilarity of it. She obviously didn't feel it. Probably for good reason. Anyway, (laughs) like this podcast wherever you're listening to it, go and follow us on Instagram, (laughs) share all our clips because actually we're great. Bye for now.